You're listening to the House Hacking Podcast, the blueprint for one of the best financial life hacks there is, house hacking. If you are looking to get ahead financially or learn about the easiest way to get started with real estate investing, then you are in the right place. Stay tuned and join a community of individuals from all walks of life that use house hacking to eliminate their housing costs and accelerating their path to financial independence. Your number one place for all things house hacking. Dan, man, I'm so excited to have you on the show. I mean, we, I know we've been chatting a bit on Instagram, but thank you for coming on and uh, sharing your story with us. You know, but before we dive in, I mean, how are you doing? And for folks that don't know you, where are you calling in from? Doing great. Uh, glad we're finally on the phone. Calling in from Mooresville, North Carolina. Awesome. Yeah, I know where that is. I, I grew up in the Cary, Raleigh, Chapel Hill area. So the, one of the things uh, I miss awesome. most... Right, right now about uh, North Carolina, some uh, good Bojangles. Uh, <laughs> so. All right, so for folks that don't really know your, your story, I mean, let's just start with this high-level overview. I mean, it's so cool of, like, how you used house hacking to get to where you're at now. So, you know, just g give folks that, that overview of, of your experience. So uh, when I graduated college, I never wanted to pay too much for a living. So I was always looking for roommates or cheaper housing. Um, hadn't bought anything yet, but my first two years, I always had roommates. And then uh, I moved to North Carolina in 2016, bought my first house in 2017. And uh, pretty much a couple of months after I bought that, I had a roommate and my cost of living went way down. And that's kind of when I got the real estate bug. Awesome. Um, from there, I found a duplex, uh, moved into that, did, got an FHA loan, got a roommate when I lived there and was living super cheap. And then uh, that basically got me to my third place. Still have a roommate, but it's just been cheap living the whole time. Awesome. And I know you're actually now getting into commercial space, which we'll, we'll get to in a little bit. So, like, what, what made you back in 2017 to decide to actually buy a property? Uh, so, when I moved down to Charlotte, I lived with my brother for a little bit. And I was trying to find a house to rent, uh, try to find some roommates to have. And cost of living down here was so cheap. Apartments were expensive, and I could buy a house, and my mortgage would be less than rent. So I uh, found a place to live, and it made made a lot more sense that that way. Yeah. And, I mean, at this point, did you have any desire to get into real estate investing, or is this just this sort of common sense thing of, like, rent's expensive, I can buy a house and have a cheaper mortgage payment. I'm going to go this route. Yeah, it just made sense at that time. I'd been listening to a bunch of personal finance, uh, just trying not to spend money on stupid things. And once I got my first place, I kind of found out a bigger pocket, and that kind of just led. Awesome. So this, this first place was just a single-family home that you were living in, and you were renting out a room? Yeah, is it a two-bedroom townhouse, uh, two bathrooms, so it was perfect for a room. room yeah, it was, it was small, easy. And then you were living in there, and the real estate bug started to get you. And then what made you want to go into a duplex and, and multifamily property? Part of that was from listening to Bigger Pockets, um, trying to get a tenant to pay for half of your mortgage. And I wanted to find a place that I could still cover if I didn't have. I found a brand new duplex, and I got tenants in it. And if I lived in my half, uh, the, my mortgage payment would have been cheaper than where I lived in the townhouse. So it made sense to me. Awesome. So that duplex, I mean, how'd you end up finding it? If it was brand new construction, was it just on the MLS and you used a realtor and bought it? Or was this like an off-market deal and you knew the builder? Um, so the builders had built some in Charlotte. And I tried to buy one, but cash buyers bought it out. 
from under me, so I couldn't get it. Um, and then I had started to talk to the builders to try to find land and build one. And then one day I got a call. They had one built. Somebody bailed out. So I got it. Awesome. I mean, that's pretty cool where you sort of started to build that relationship, let them know you're interested in, and then they realize like, oh, yeah, you know, he, he wants to actually uh, get, get this property, and they called you up. And what did you end yeah. up buying it for? I know you said you did the FHA loan, but what was the purchase price? Uh, 275 Awesome. And then brand new, three bedroom, two and a half bath. And so that's a pretty big du duplex on each, each side. So, and then what did your, you know, payment end up being with the taxes, mortgage, insurance, uh, the, and everything? It, it was about 1800 All right. And then what did you rent the other half for of the duplex? So eleven hundred to start. It's at eleven fifty now. But I had a roommate on my side paying. So you were almost br breaking even. I mean, you were living in there for you know what? What's that? One hundred fifty bucks a month to two hundred bucks a month. Yeah, it was less than two fifty. I mean, that's pretty cheap. Cheap way to live, and in a brand new construction home. I mean, that's pretty awesome. Yeah, I had that set up for two years. Now, did you sell that townhouse when you moved into the duplex, or did you turn the townhouse into a rental? No, I turned it into a rental. So I went from no tenants to two tenants immediately, um, which was a bit of a, a lot at that time. But Awesome. And what, what was the mortgage on that, and what are you getting for rent on it now, now that you moved out? Uh, the mortgage is about 650 The HOA is 100 um, and I get 12 Awesome. I mean, so you got 500 bucks in there to... Um, set aside for maintenance and some capex, and then have have some profit. Now the duplex, so you you've moved out of there, right? And you, what made you want to go into the third place? Uh, so my roommate actually moved out, and it kind of just got me looking at other properties. I've always been looking, trying to find another deal, and uh, I wanted a little more space, and I didn't want to live right next to my tenants anymore. So I found. A one bedroom uh, townhouse with a garage and I figured that'd be perfect for me uh, and when I went to look at it there was a, a bigger unit right next door garage uh, three bedroom uh, it's about 1600 square feet and it wasn't that much more and I figured it would rent better in the future so I decided to go with that awesome and now that duplex are you doing room rental on, on the side you were living in, or did you just do a flat lease? Uh, I just did a flat lease. Awesome. So I have a, another couple that lives there, and they get, or I get 1200 for that. Awesome. So, I mean, you're getting 1200 and 1150 so you, you've got a nice little buffer in there as well for, you know, putting money aside for some maintenance, CapEx, and some cash flow. And now this townhouse condo that that you're living in three bedroom and you said you have a roommate in there as well yep he pays so, 500 a month and, so, and what's your mortgage on that place with hoa it's just over so you're you keep moving from sort of pretty nice place to nice place and you're building up this rental portfolio so you sort of did this um house hacking leapfrog strategy as i, I sort of call it where yeah move from one property use that to get into the next property and use that into the next property Yep. You know, so well, one thing we didn't touch on with a couple of these properties was, you know, for, for that first place you bought, how much did you have to do for a down payment? I only did 15%, which I think was like 15,000 uh, down. Uh, and I'm now well over the 20% down. So I got rid of the PMI. Awesome. And then obviously on the FHA, you did the three and a half percent down. Do you I, still have the FHA loan on there, or have you refinanced out of it? I still have the FHA. I kind of wish I refinanced out, but uh, I've moved into a new house, and some of the commercial stuff we'll go into, so timing-wise, it wouldn't have Yep. Um, and then, so you're in this third place. I mean, is your plan to stay in here for a bit longer, or are you now thinking of doing a, a fourth place, or is the commercial stuff now keeping you busy and that's where you want to put your time and your money uh i have my eye in commercial right now uh 
I'm kind of doing a live and flip. This place is pretty nice, but I'm making it a little bit nice, nicer. Um, so I'll probably stay here for a few years and then focus on commercial for now. Awesome. So over this period of time, I mean, you bought that first property in 2017, you got the duplex, and now you're in this third place. I mean, you've done essentially three deals in three years on the residential side. What type of work have you been doing over that period of time? Like for my full-time job? Yeah. So I'm a manufacturing engineer for one of the NASCAR teams in Charlotte. So it's a pretty busy uh, job during the week, but I've still had time to do all the rental stuff on weekends. Awesome. And how are you now managing all, all of these tenants that you have? I mean, do you just have them mail you checks, you know, send you money via PayPal or Venmo? Do you use property management software? Uh, most of it's through Zelle, through Wells yeah. Fargo. Um, they all just pay me through that right now. My duplex is only 10 minutes up the road, and my townhouse is about 20 minutes away. So I just want to recap this a little bit. I mean, you, you mentioned one thing you wish you would have done before you, with that duplex, is refinanced it while you were still in there. That way you could get the primary residence loan and try to get rid of some of that mortgage insurance. I mean, what's something else that, like, a lesson learned over doing these three properties in three years that... You, you wish, you know, you could have done differently knowing what you know now. Uh, talk to more lenders when you're trying to do a deal. Um, I found out that you can do conventional and you don't always have to put 20% down. You can yep. get in sometimes with 10 and even five. Um, so on the duplex, I wish I'd shopped around a little bit more because I probably could have got a, got a better rate. Yep. Awesome. And then, you know, what, what's sort of a big lesson learned that, that's helped you now get into commercial real estate? Is there any transition between, hey, here's something in residential that's helped me think better about getting into some commercial property? Part of it is just doing deals. Uh, everybody looks and is scared to get in because the numbers are as good as they want them to, they want them to be. Um, but now that I have them, it's just helped me grow. So doing a deal is better than not doing one. Awesome. I mean, and I know we sort of went through this really quick for everyone listening and why, why I really wanted to have him on and is I wanted to talk with Dan about how he used house hacking to start to get into some commercial space. So we, we've done deep dives on all the ins and outs of house hacking before, so let's let's really get into this. I mean, why why did you say like I'm gonna keep doing some house hackings and saving this money and buy the next one and the next one? But what made you want to think about commercial and stay away from re residential? Well, we kind of fell into commercial. Commercial. My brother uh, saw a car wash and was interested in it, and with all the real estate I had done. He wanted to look at it and see how we could make it possible. So we started looking into it, looking at the numbers, um, and trying to figure out how we could finance it and realized that it was possible with everything we had. So we tried it and ended up going through it. Awesome. So, I mean, had your brother had any real estate experience at all? I mean, was he renting or at least owned his own home or really like... He was looking to you to say, like, hey, you've built up three properties. Like, I, I want you to partner, you know, be, partly because we're brothers, but because you have a little bit of r real estate experience, or did he have some investing background as well? So he owns his home, and then we inherited a house that we Airbnb. So he's got a little bit of experience, um, but he kind of wanted to own his own business business and knew all the benefits from the real estate side of it. Awesome. And what, what type of work was he doing before the, the car wash? And was the idea of, hey, I want to leave this other line of work and run the car wash full time? Or did you guys have this idea of we're going to buy the car wash and you know we're going to let someone else manage it and run it? We actually manage it on the side. It's a self-service with an automated but doesn't need full-time employment. So uh, we both kept our jobs and it's kind of just a side gig for us right now. 
and it'll help us grow. So when, when did you buy the car wash? We closed in September. Very so cool. So I, I, I bought my third house in May, like right after the shutdown, and then went into contract for the car wash. Oh, awesome. Really, really quick. Yep. So what, what, what made your brother realize like, hey, this could be a good deal? Or was it literally, was he driving by and saw a sign? Did he see a listing for it somewhere else? Because... You know, with the car wash, it's sort of, I look at it as there's two pieces. Like, you're actually buying the land and any building that's on it, but you're also buying a business as well that needs to be managed. So what what made him think about this and realize that this was a deal, or how did he come across it? Um, so he's a mechanic for some professional dirt bike riders, and he knows somebody that has had a few in Florida. Uh so he knew they did well, and he just kept driving to buy it, and I drove by it as well. Never really thought about it until he brought it up, and then we looked at it, and the numbers all looked good. We talked to the owners to see how much work really went into it, and it wasn't so bad. So we figured we could manage on the side, and uh, that's how it started. Awesome. All right, so let's get into some of the numbers of the car wash. And so... You thought it was going to be a good deal. You're talking with the owners. Did you use any sort of commercial broker or a business broker, or did you negotiate with the owners directly? We used a business broker. Uh, the broker that was selling the property for the owners, we used him as well. Okay. And then what did you end up buying the uh, property for? Uh, 825 including the real estate, the business, and everything. Awesome. So all, all in. And did you get an appraisal on it? And like, do you have any idea of like how much was the actual property and land worth? And then how much of that, like 825,000 was, you know, the, the true business side of it? So the land is worth like 250, I think 250. And then all the equipment and everything, another 300,000. And then the business is on top of that. Okay. So you're essentially getting like $550,000 worth of assets. And then the rest was, you know, we're an established business and all, all yep. of that good stuff. So what, how do you evaluate this? I mean, it, like, what, what I really want folks to get from this show is like house hacking is a tool that you can use to help to get ahead financially and help you get a basic understanding of how real estate works and how, it is to run a business. And then how did you use that and leverage that to, to buy this uh, car wash, which is both a property and a business? And how did you actually think through this and run the numbers on this deal? So we looked at the seller's numbers and uh, what it brought in a year after expenses and then looked at what a mortgage, what a mortgage would be for it and saw that it still made money and then we saw all the room for improvement on it so we could potentially bring the NOI up, make the property worth more or the business worth more. Um, and that's kind of how we evaluate. So, so what was the net, net operating income on this property then after all the expenses for, you know, the soaps and repairs and all of that good stuff? About 75 a year. And then how did you end up evaluating the mortgage on it? And was it truly a mortgage or was it a combo of a mortgage, SBA loan, business loan? Explain how that the financing piece worked. What type of loan did you get? What's the rate, the term, and what type of loan it is and, and who you got it from? Uh, so it's a SBA loan. Uh, there's two different types, the 704 I forget off the top of my head. Um, it's a 25-year mortgage, mortgage at 6%. So the payment is high, but the business covers it and then some. And how, did you have to bring a down payment for an SBA loan? How did that work? And how did they evalu evaluate y'all? Because y'all never owned a car wash where, you know, most folks think, hey, maybe I'm not a real estate investor, but I can still get a loan to buy that first property you know do they look at your personal credit experience yeah. how did they look through that 
they look at all your personal finance, uh, what you do for work. Um, it, it's definitely a lot. It's more than a residential residential mortgage. Um, it took definitely took a lot longer. They had to do some appraisals on our houses, um, and constant updated uh, financial statement. I'm forgetting all the detail the details of it. Okay. And then did you guys have to do like a business plan at all as part of that uh, SBA loan or did yep. that loan officer help, help you create that? We, they helped us create one, but we kind of did one that explained our backgrounds and why we thought we could do it and be successful. Awesome. And then what did that payment end up being on, on this then? If you got a, it's amortized over 25 years and at a 6% rate. It's like 4900 a month. Okay. So you're, you're, you're all in with your payments and stuff of about 60 grand. And then you sort of thought of like, okay, great. You know, if, if we're at 75, 80 grand a year in net operating income after paying all the maintenance and expenses, you know, you've got a decent little chunk of m money in there, especially if you think there's some value add and some upside to the deal. Was that really sort of the approach that you took of like, it's not a ton of money, but you know, 15 grand a year is pretty nice. And we think we can make it even better. Yeah, we knew there was room for improvement. And then it's in Cornelius, North Carolina. Um, and there's a lot of things being built, new developments. They're building a massive rec center right next door, apartment complex less than a mile away. So the traffic's just going to in increase. So we figured if we kept it nice uh, and made it easier easier to use, it's just going to go up. Yeah, I mean, I remember like growing up in North Carolina, like after any sort of snowstorm, even a tiny one, the lines at the car washes are backed up like crazy. And then in the spring, when all the yellow pollen drops, the yep. lines at car washes are backed up like crazy. Um, and then, I mean, I think this is a tip for folks, and I don't even think this is just a tip for a commercial or car wash, but you were buying in the path of progress where, hey, the business seems to make sense as is, but progress is happening all around it and rapidly moving towards it and past it. Um, to me, I mean, that just seems like a really strong upside potential as well. Yeah, for sure. And we didn't really think of it in the beginning, but we now own the real estate as well. So if we were to sell it in the future, we could keep the land and make the new owners pay a lease to it. Yeah, sell the business portion and get the lease back. It's awesome. Yep. See, I mean, you've got, and, and this is another thing I, I want to call out where maybe you already realize this, but for folks who are listening, uh, this brilliant little gold nugget just rolled out. And it's the idea of having multiple exit strategies. So if you're going to do your house hack and any sort of investment, the more exit strategies you have, the more security you have with your investment. So he could sell the whole entire business and land. He could demo the business and rebuild something else on there in the future. He could sell the car wash business and lease the land to the new owner and collect a land lease, a triple net lease. He's got multiple options here. So, I mean, I think this is just golden little nugget just rolled right out of your mouth right there. I just had to call it out. It's an awesome little thing. Yeah, we're definitely glad we did it. It was a big undertaking, but it's been great since. So, what well, one thing about this is, you know, what do you have to do for a down payment? Um, I mean, did you have to give them collateral? You mentioned they wanted to appraise your houses. Did did you just sort of put up some of your houses collateral and you didn't need a down payment? How did that portion of it work out? So we only had to do 10% down, um, but we did have to put some houses for collateral. So that's where having real estate helped. I was able to put one of my rentals as collateral, not my current house where I live. Um, so that was just a huge advantage. And it also just helped my personal income statement because I had uh, revenue coming in from multiple places. Yeah, you had increased net worth from the equity. You had the multiple income streams, the cash flow from the property. And then you literally leveraged 
your property to help you buy this this new thing. You, you had that collateral, use it as collateral. I mean, this and this is why, for folks that are listening, why I wanted to have him on is because he literally used house hacking to start setting up and another income stream. So he's got his job doing um, the engineering team with the, the NASCAR team. He's got the cash flow from his house hacks that are now rental properties. And now he's got some income from this car wash commercial business. I mean, you, you literally like in from 2017 to now, I mean, built multiple income streams. This, this is just awesome. Yeah, it's been it's been fun. So and I love real estate. So so it's it's fun. To, the more you learn. Yeah. So what's next, man? I mean, are you, are you gonna do more residential? I mean, do you want to do some multifamily? Or are you sort of saying like, hey, I like that traditional real estate, but I like real estate that's combined with businesses. I mean, what where are you gonna go from here? What what's sort of on the horizon? Uh, looking at another commercial biz, business, I like the idea of buying something that you can improve and make the value better. Um, storage units is kind of on the list. Yeah. We put some offers in and looked at a few. So that's kind of where we're going, right? Uh, we Americans love our junk and never want to throw it away. I mean, yep. <laughs> I, I feel like self-storage could be good for decades to come. Uh, yeah. Not, knock on wood, but yeah, that is so cool. Look, Dan, man, I really appreciate you taking the time to chat with us today. Uh, but before we let you go, we like to ask all of our guests a set of final six questions. Are you ready for them? Yep. Awesome. Let's get into it. All right. So question number one, what is your favorite personal finance related resource? So blog, book, podcast, whatever you want, personal finance related. So I read Automatic Millionaire by David Bach right before I graduated college and it just make me or helped me make smart financial decisions, save money, basically automatically save every paycheck and don't look at the account. Um, yeah. Awesome. All right. So question number two, what is your favorite real estate related resource? Bigger pocket. Yeah, uh, definitely. I mean that all their books and forums. Yeah. Awesome. All right. So question number three, what has been your favorite travel destination so far? I've been to Europe a few times or quite a bit. Uh, I went to Slovenia in 2019 and that was my favorite. Just being oh, in the awesome. Alps. Yeah. A lot of fun. Cool. All right. So what's next on your travel vacation list? I'm going to Florida in March for a week. Um, I would like to go to Europe if travel opens up. And then uh, I'd like to go back out to Salt Lake City, Utah, just to visit some friends. Awesome. All right. So that brings us to question number five. What is your biggest bucket list item you have not accomplished yet? I would like to live in Europe. Oh, I'm right there with you. That, that's my wife and I. That, that's on our horizon as well. Yeah, my parents are from Germany, so uh, my extended family still lives there. So I'd like to go live there for at least. Yeah, very cool. All right, so the sixth and final question, what is your favorite life hack? Podcasts and audio books. I feel like I drive a lot, and I just listen to podcasts and audio books. And even though you tune out the drive, you learn. Definitely. It's a great use of that um net time right it's like no extra time it's i already got to be doing this thing so yeah. you can just sort of add, add it in look dan man i appreciate you coming on and sharing your story if people want to hear and learn more about you where's the the best place for them to uh, find you uh instagram or uh, facebook awesome and what what's your instagram handle for folks uh free yeah and Yo, I, I'm not going to give it away, but folks, go check out his Instagram. Maybe by, by the handle, you'll, you'll get a little bit of uh, an idea of what, what it is. Um, and I'll be sure to put all of that in the uh, show notes for folks. That way you can go there and link over to uh, his info. So, Dan, thank you again so much for being on the show and sharing your story with us. Awesome. Thanks for having me.